Welcome to Art That Plays and Prays. If you're new here, let me introduce myself. I'm Ginger. I love God and I love art, so I built this channel to get my hands dirty with paint while my mouth talks about God. We'll do just that today. This video is the first of my urban sketching series. Urban sketching is just like journaling, but instead of jotting down words, you're drawing cityscapes and memorable scenes you discover as you travel. You can sketch outdoors, like on location, or you can take a photo and draw from the comforts of your home, which is what I did with this one here. You start with a rough pencil drawing, draw the scene as you perceive it, choose only the parts you want to focus on, there's no need to overanalyze the details. In my sketch here, I just drew basic geometric shapes and lines. Even my perspectives are out of whack and look amateurish, but that's okay. Urban sketching is not about perfection anyway. It's an art form that looks beautiful even when it looks unrealistic and messed up. After drawing, I applied a wash of gouache. <laughs> That's the rhyming wash of gouache. You can use watercolor if you want. Gouache is more opaque, so it's actually it actually presents more complications if you apply it on top of ink. The ink lines get covered up, and that's the reason why I started this process with paint instead of starting it off with ink, which is the more common practice among sketchers, urban sketchers. Anyway, if you notice, I'm applying gouache randomly. I'm creating blocks of color to define elements of the scene, like gray for the road, red for the roof, yellowish beige for the walls of the buildings. I'm not getting into too much details. I'm just playing around very roughly. Sometimes I don't have pigments loaded on my brush. I just swipe plain water on the paper and just let the water work its magic and move across boundaries for that watercolor effect. If you're going to do this, feel free to follow the original color values of the cityscape or or change the tones using your own color palette. It's up to you. If the roof shingles, for example, are clay orange, but you want to paint it cadmium red, go ahead, it's your art. You, you call the shots. When the paint washes are done, pick a fine liner pen that dries permanent, one that won't bleed when you pass a wet brush over it. Use that ink pen to draw the details of your painting. You can trace over your initial sketch and keep it simple, or you can add more intricate line values like play around with thick lines and thin lines and add squiggly lines or cross hatches. Do whatever. The more line variations you put, the more interesting the sketch looks. It's all up to you. Now, as you watch me work here, I want to talk about the verse in Revelation 21, which says, Behold, I make all things new. Now, that verse came to my head immediately after I saw a picture of this town in Germany, which is what I'm sketching here. It's a place in Germany. That verse just popped in my head, maybe because Germany has a different kind of architecture. Uh, the scene I saw as something new and unique compared to the buildings and houses I see in Canada where I live. Uh, going to a new place and experiencing a new type of adventure in a different country leaves you with a feeling of hope and wonder. Now, if you read your Bible and follow the context of this verse, Behold, I make all things new, you'll know that it's, it's talking about the end of the age, when God will wipe away our tears, when there will be no more pain and all former things will be gone. God will make things new. But, but what about the here and now? Does this verse only give us hope for the future, like the end of the, our life? But what about our circumstances now? Can't we, can't we have the hope of newness now? 
can we dare to tell God, Lord, I want change to happen in my life now. I want suffering to be gone now. Do I have to wait until your second coming for such hope to come? While I was reflecting on this verse, I looked back at my life and realized how this line kept showing up during critical times when whenever I was in deep trouble. Each time I suffered, in my prayer time, the Lord would point me to this verse, either directly from the Bible or through some of my devotional readings. It felt like God was talking to me and saying, Ginger, this problem you're facing now is temporary, so hang tight. Soon I will make all things new. God gives us doses of hope by promising that change will happen soon. It may be a physical change or a spiritual restoration or some other form of renewal. I don't always know, but hearing God say, I will make all things new, like I will be your God, you will be my people, I will wipe your tears away. So hearing all of that, isn't it enough to replenish our lost energies? It gives you enough hope to move forward again, despite the crosses that still weigh oppressively on your shoulders. Friends, I want to share with you a short analogy. When, when you're traveling to a new country, before you reach your destination, isn't it that you go through so much hassle first? Like first you have to pack your luggage, then you go through the hassles of immigration and customs. Sometimes you're harassed by questions, then you squeeze your body in that narrow economy seat uh, that has a legroom meant for kids. Then your ears pop with the air pressure, turbulence hits the plane, and you, you wonder if you'll ever make it out alive. Before you step out of the plane into the newness of your paradise destination, you had to go through all of that trouble. But you didn't mind the inconvenience because you knew that what awaits you on the other side is immensely beautiful. Well, that's the same thing with our life. If you're going through a difficult time now, I hope you realize that it's God working to bring that sense of newness in you. Before it gets better, you have to travel through turbulent first, turbulence first. Before you see the beauty on the other side, you need to carry some burdens and luggage first. Your suffering has, well, it has a reason and purpose for your future. Every heartbreaking day in your life was meant to create something new in you. Maybe God wants you to have a new heart. Maybe God is trying to remove your resentments and give you a new spirit by allowing you to go through pain first. Whatever it is, just remember, God cannot create something new in you unless He breaks down what's old. That process of breaking, we call that suffering, but God calls that renewal. He is restoring you by breaking you first, just like a new building cannot rise unless the rundown structures are torn down first. God has to throw away the decayed wood and rusted steel and replace them with a fresh foundation. So friends, the next time you're about to open your mouth to curse your sufferings, bite your tongue and put a hold on that complaint. Read back this verse to yourself as a reminder of the purpose of your pain. Read it back again and again. Behold, I'm making all things new. God is making all things new. Because there, my friend, is where your hope lies. Thank you for joining me in this great devotion. This is again Ginger for That Place and Praise. See you next time. Until then, I encourage you to be a blessing to others. Thank you.